Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and thank you for joining me as I continue with the journey of explaining not what happened in the COVID pandemic, I've done that already, but now I'm trying to predict the future. And in the next few days, coming up next Thursday, depending on when you watch this, the 11th of September, I am going to try and predict what clinical presentation is going to be like if GERT's idea of this Hivicron, uh, and, and a variant that will evade the immune system, um, especially in the vaccinated cohort, what does that look like? And this, in my view, is risk mitigation. So if you are interested in that, please click on the link below in the description, and you can join us in the next few days to try and explore that. As part of that process, I am going to be introducing another concept, which I will do in more detail, because I am thinking about, okay, based on the prediction, based on what happens with immunity, the virus every time it circulates, and people don't realize this, they think because it's a mild infection that it's okay. It doesn't work like that. What happens is every time it does its circulation, and it's almost similar to measles in that sense, this is where measles is a problem, is that it can wipe the immune memory. And COVID takes out very specific immune cells, the natural killer cells, the T cells, the B regulatory cells, and it acts in some descriptions like an immune deficiency virus. So it's not HIV, but it can have that impact of dampening down the immune system. And so this creates a problem because at a population level, if a lot of people have poor immunity, how does this present clinically? And so as part of that journey, as I, I said, and this is my exploration of the science, um, I'm kind of like building a Noah's Ark and I'm educating people who are interested in learning about this big storm that is coming that I have, um, or Gert has predicted, and I am saying, well, let's build an ark. Let's think about it. Let's anticipate it. If nothing happens, you can all point and laugh at me and say, look, you've built an ark and nothing happened. But believe me, if this happens, you want to know the person who has built the ark. This is where we are at. So let's just go through a little bit of science. And it's largely because of a paper I was looking at with regards to the pancreas. And the reason why I was looking at this was that the COVID infection increases mortality and worsens outcomes in acute pancreatitis. And this was done, a paper done from Hungary, and I pointed out that acute pancreatitis is a major threat, which I'll take you through in just a few minutes. And when they looked at it in the context of concurrent infection with SARS-CoV-2, acute pancreatitis exhibit, exhibited heightened odds of inpatient in hospital mortality of three times, 3.15. Pretty serious stuff. What it means is that if somebody had COVID, and then they developed pancreatitis, there's a three times higher risk of mortality. And there's a reason why I'm focused on the pancreas in this situation. And therefore, let's just look at what the science says. So here is your basic science information. This here is just an image of the abdomen. And the brown part here, this is zoned out, is the liver. And just behind the liver, so it's slightly hidden, is the gallbladder. And you can see the bile duct in green, and it will go into the small intestine. Right beside it, and where you have the joining is the pancreas. So it's actually behind it um, more than anything else. And it's behind the stomach as well. It's just hidden at the moment. And these two ducts join together uh, to form the common bile duct, which then releases bile and alkaline pancreatic juice into the small intestine, a very important part of digestion. 
And so this is a critical phase to understand really what that pancreas is. And when you look at it here, again, we've taken the liver out of the picture, a common hepatic duct, common bile duct, and you can see here the pancreatic duct as well. And they release inside the duodenum bile as well as pancreatic fluid, which is alkaline and helps to neutralize the acid from the stomach and has lots of enzymes in it. All good. And so this pancreas is important to understand. And you'll understand why one of the more serious conditions when it comes to cancer, pancreatic cancer, is very serious simply because it very often presents late. And there is a reason for that. The reason that the pancreas presents late in terms of cancer, and this is a CT scan, this is the right-hand side, don't get confused. This is the right, this is the left. So this is the liver here. The dark part represents the bowel, either stomach, small bowel, and probably some large bowel. What you must notice is that this is the front of your abdomen. So your umbilicus would be somewhere on the top down here. And behind all of this bowel is the pancreas. It's what we describe as retroperitoneal, meaning it's beyond, behind all of the bowel and everything that's wrapped up in these loops of mesentery. It's behind that. And this is part of the reason why it's such a problem, because it's, it's kind of hidden. This represents your vertebra. This is the back, the spinal cord is will be just down here and so you can see that it is close to the aorta big artery and it's behind everything so when there is a problem with the pancreas it's not easy to identify which is why pancreatic cancer can present so late that's the important point that i'm emphasizing when we are thinking about this in terms of covid now remember what what I am talking about is a variant, as Gert had predicted, Hivicron, which would then be rampant, rampantly spreading like a viral sepsis. It's infecting everything. And my prediction based on the science is that the pancreas will become one of the targets with regards to that. And the reason is, this is again a histology looking at the pancreas here. This is a cut section of what it would look like inside and this is a close-up of it here and you have to remember your pancreas these yellow orangish cells represents the beta cells that produce insulin and you have some other cells that produce glucagon it produces somastatin um, pancreatic polypeptide but the important thing is these beta cells in yellow and if these get damaged you can't produce insulin and this can cause diabetes one of the reasons why we will see more diabetes over the years because these cells can get damaged. The blood vessels are important as well to understand and you'll see in a second why I'm highlighting them. So what you have to remember, beta cells in yellow, blood vessels here are important because they have high levels of ACE2. And ACE2 means either virus can infect them or antibodies targeting the spike protein or caught up with ACE2 autoantibodies will also target these important cells. So this is why it's critical to understand. And you can see there is another part that gets affected with regards to the um, pancreas, and it's these acinous cells. These here produce the, um, the alkaline fluid that goes into the small intestine. And some of these, especially when they're close to blood vessels, like these here, will have ACE2 on them. So these ones will be high risk of getting infected or damaged. The problem is, is that what happens in pancreatitis is that if these cells get damaged and you have the fluid, the pancreatic fluid leaking out, it then starts to destroy the tissue around it chemical damage because it is too strong to be out there in terms of the tissues. And so you can end up with a situation like this. This here is the normal pancreas. 
And here I've shown almost like bullets targeting different parts of the pancreas. You will then have leakage and it will damage more of the pancreas and this will become inflamed. And this is what I am talking about in the context of viral sepsis. I am anticipating that people will have subclinical inflammation of the pancreas. Now, the reason I say it's subclinical is because, as I said before, if you have a situation where the immune system is already exhausted and not functioning as well, what can then happen is that even when it becomes inflamed, the symptoms are less, kind of like what you would have in an AIDS patient or a patient who is on chemotherapy or immune suppressants you would then have very unusual patterns with regards to the presentation of disease. The point or the final point here now is what can it present like? And this is a case report. This is from Russia, uh, well, Tunisia actually. And they were talking about the Sputnik vaccine that caused a case of autoimmune pancreatitis. And this was from 2022. Uh, published actually in 2023. And the, the reason why I highlighted this is because I was looking at, well, how did it present in an autoimmune pancreatitis? And so here is an example of the thing that I would be looking for in terms of viral sepsis. What would happen? What could happen? So here you have a 39-year-old male who had no history of pancreatitis or anything else, He then had problems, but on day 424, when he had the second dose, four days after that, he had severe pain, epigastric pain, spread to the lower and mid back and flanks, and was associated with normal um, with nausea and vomiting. So he didn't know what that was. So he was taking paracetamol, um, good dose, reasonable dose, um, not too high, for a week. But his pain was worse, so he switched over to ibuprofen. It was just not settling. He thought it was his disc. Eventually, he went to see a doctor. So that's the kind of subtle presentation, or even more subtle than that, because he at least had pain. What happens if it's just a dull sensation? Barely anything at all. And when they did his liver function test, they found that they were abnormal, they were elevated. And so the essence of it, they then went on to do a magnetic resonance imaging, which showed that he had inflammation in the body and the tail of the pancreas. He had a specific sign, a sausage shape, which was very characteristic for autoimmune pancreatitis. And in this case, they thought it was autoimmune pancreatitis secondary to the vaccine because they didn't have any other cause. He wasn't taking paracetamol in high enough doses for it to be that. And when you look at the CT here or in the MRI in this case, this is the swollen pancreas. And essentially, again, you have to remember it is behind all of the organs in front. And so the pain can be quite subtle. This is the point as I said, that I'm making when I look towards this presentation. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I am trying to predict the clinical presentation with regards to this viral storm. If there is a variant that is breaking through the immune system and you have immune exhaustion, that's my target. And so in order to piece it together, I am thinking along specific lines. I am thinking about okay, what happens to patients who have AIDS, not HIV, but AIDS, where they're immune deficient? How do they present with disease? What causes them to die? Similarly, with chemotherapy or people who are on immune suppressants, all of these questions are what I'll be tying together to say this is the presentation that I expect clinically because the people who are likely to be affected will have immune exhaustion. Their immune system just can't get any action to get forward again. 
that's the target as to what I'm looking at. And this is why I'm talking about these things. So remember, if you want to join us, look out, look in the description below. You will also see the links to Humming Heroes and uh, Rapid Vascular Aging. All of these things are there. And critically, you must like, you must subscribe, you must make a comment, and ideally share. Have a great evening until we speak again. Thank you. A hero, an immune adventure, humming heroes. Your lyrical guide to the body's defenders. Now on Amazon. Check the links below.